connection to God bringing a state of contentment, confidence, and hope. It is a certainty of a future good. The believer's confidence that the person purpose for which God created him or her will be realized. This joy is inexpressible in orientation of the mind and heart, and unlike happiness, is not dependent on circumstances. There are more references to joy in the Psalms, as you can see just from reading those two chapters. Joy is a word used over and over than any other book of the Bible. But God's word is infused with joy from beginning to end throughout both the Old and New Testaments. The Psalms were the worship and praise hymnal for the people of Israel. And in the Psalms read today, we see the repeated call to shout for joy, an ex exultant, grateful, overflowing adoration and praise for God extended to an ever-widening circle first to the worshiping congregation at the temple, then to all the peoples of the earth, and then to creation itself, to all of the world. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy, for he will judge the world in righteousness and all the peoples with equity. The New Testament opens with the angels' choruses of joy at Christ's birth and ends with the joyous hallelujahs of his eternal reign. The gospel is joyous news. Behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, the angels proclaim. The objects of joy are God himself, God's promises, the gospel message, Christ's kingdom, the joy of a future state of being, the kingdom of God is about joy, peace, and justice. Joy arises from our understanding, loving, and embracing divine truth. Truths understood become a source of joy as the light of truth replaces the darkness of confusion. The Ethiopian eunuch went on his way rejoicing after having the scripture explained to him and being baptized by Philip. Joy is not the absence of suffering, but the presence of God. We all suffer from seasons of sadness, difficult times. There are so many tears in life. We can question the meaning of passages like, consider it pure joy when you meet trials of many kinds, or rejoice in afflictions. How does one consider it pure joy when brokenhearted and overcome by trouble and sorrow Unable even to pray, when just getting out of bed and putting one foot in front of the other requires great effort. It is not the specific trial or affliction itself we rejoice in, but because we are assured of God's love and presence. Christ comes into our place of tears, bringing joy, comfort, and strength, enabling us to rise and carry on. In the, through the testing of our faith, we learn perseverance, patience, and mature in our faith, becoming complete in joy, discovering truth, wisdom, and joy in the midst of our brokenness. The psalmist writes, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Morning can sometimes seem to take a long time coming but it does come. God's compassions never fail. Great is his faithfulness. We can be sorrowful and yet rejoicing. I find this poem titled Enough, written by Lee Younger, helpful in understanding the basis of joy and suffering. Enough. God has taken me through stuff, hard stuff, stuff I didn't want or ask for. God has let me suffer. He has not explained why, and he has not always answered my questions or my prayers. I don't understand his methods, but I believe he loves me. 
Sometimes in the darkest moments, the only thing I have to cling to is the fact that Jesus died for me. But if that were the only evidence I had for his love, it would be enough. Joy <clears throat> is glad obedience. The joy of Jesus was to constantly do the will of the Father in absolute self-sacrifice. And we find joy in our own obedience and self-sacrifice for the sake of Christ. Like love, there are different kinds of joy. And like love, joy is a fruit of the Spirit, called the joy of faith. When jo joy has so long possessed the mind, it has settled in as a, into a temper, it is called cheerfulness. This is natural joy. Moral, moral joy arises from the performance of good actions. There is joy in ministry, in the fellowship of his church, in the use of our gifts and service to others. This kind of joy is called peace or serenity of conscience. Sin can steal and damage our joy, our relationship with God, when we grieve the Holy Spirit. King David, when he committed adultery with Bathsheba, and then sent her husband to the front lines to be killed in battle, writes in Psalms, When I kept silent about my sin, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For night and day your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was sapped. My sin is ever before me. When confronted with his sin, he asks God for forgiveness, and his confession brings relief. And he asks for God to return his joy. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. And God does restore his joy. The root of joy is gratitude. A Benedictine monk uh, said this insightful thing. It is not joy that makes us grateful. It is gratitude that makes us joyful. Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of our lives. The quiet confidence that everything is ultimately going to be all right. And the determined choice to praise God in every situation. Jesus tells us to enter into his joy, his purpose, his truth, his love, his beauty, his spirit is upon us. Our inner strength and joy rests on God's joy. Joy is the echo of God in us. Priest Henry Nouwen wrote, Joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. It is a choice based on the knowledge that we belong to God and have found in God our refuge and our safety and that nothing can take God away from us. Joy is the experience of knowing that you are unconditionally loved and that nothing, sickness, failure, emotional distress, oppression, war, or even death can take that love away. We can walk through the darkest of days with joy, knowing the light of his presence is shining upon us. The Italian friar priest Giovanni in 1513 said, The gloom of the world is but a shadow. Behind it, yet within our reach, is joy. Choose joy. Amen. Um, as you know, you could leave your offering in the back plate in the entryway. Let us now say a uh, praise God from whom the blessings flow and say a prayer of dedication.
dedication. Let the band of angels watch over us, O Lord, lest we set our foot against a stone. Send them now, Lord. Send them now, so that here we return soon to rejoicing. And let our gifts flow freely, self born on angels' wings. In the name of the child about whom the angels sing. Amen. We come now to the prayers of the people. Are there any special requests? Let me, yes, I have a nephew that's having um, a corroded artery cleaned out this coming Friday. His name is Phil. Okay. And he's he's not a young man. Okay. Anything else? You know, I know my brother, my youngest brother, Joel, um, he had the, the uh, COVID. He lives in Chicago, and um, he uh, made it through it, but it was a really rough going. And um, so he's recovering, and uh, I just like to ask that uh, we pray that he make a full, complete recovery, no side effects. Okay, did you say Joe or Joel? Joel, J O J O L. Joel, okay. Um, yes. Um, my mother's in assisted living, and we I received a text last night at about 2 in the morning that she was taken to the hospital in Bloomington, and that's all the information I can get from them. Oh, okay. So. Okay. It's Kathy. I, I just have a prayer of joy. Um, I just came back from Virginia this morning, and I went um, past the, uh, the divide, and the trees on that hill were all flocked with beautiful, beautiful crested snow. It looked like a, um, a, a, a crystal palace. Mm -hmm. So um, just prayers of joy for the beauty that God gives to us. You know, I experienced that on my drive here today, too. It was very beautiful. All right, well then, uh, let's go to prayer. O oh, light of the world, <clears throat> we come forth from the darkness into a new dawn. With the dawning of your sun, we sing forth your praise. For now the earth has a savior, a Christ. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage to follow him faithfully through the lands of Egypt, through the trials of doubt, through the times of persecution and testing. Even as our Savior leads us, we know that he brings the goodness and blessing of God each day. For new birth, for new life, for the path ahead into final glory, we give our thanks and praise. We pray now also for these people with physical needs, uh, for Brother Joel, who is recovering from COVID, we pray for complete recovery for him. For Sue's mother, who had gone to the hospital, and we don't know the details, but you do. Be present with her. Give her caregivers wisdom. May Sue be able to find out some information very soon. We pray for Joanne's brother, Phil, who is having carotid surgery. Give his surgeons, his caregivers, the uh, skills, the knowledge, and help him to do well through that surgery that it might be successful. Be with him as he recovers. And we do thank you for the beauty of your earth, for the beauty of this morning, for the sunshine of, in, the, in the snow and the beauty of all your seasons that you bless us with. And we thank you now um, as we pray the prayer you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God 
blesses us and sends us a mission to the world. Mari will play a little town of Bethlehem. speaks to us, I would say, much more often than we realize. God's message is not written out in starlight, although sometimes it is, like when we look around at his creation. Um, rather, it is written out for each of us in the humdrum, helter-skelter events of each day. It is in a, a message that in the long run just might make all the difference. It certainly does. Um, My benediction is just this, go forth in the joy of the Lord and spread that joy to others. Amen. <laughs>